For a rational conversation on this subject, we're honored tonight to be joined by a rational person, the former Democratic Congresswoman from Hawaii, Tulsi Gabbard. Congresswoman, thanks so much for coming on tonight. Thank you. So let's just, and it's hard to know what to believe always and especially now, but let's just stipulate, agree to agree, that it seems likely we could see some conflict between Russia and Ukraine soon. How should we view that? Oh, well, first of all, Biden, President Biden could end this crisis and prevent a war uh, with Russia by doing something very simple, guaranteeing that Ukraine will not become a member of NATO. Because if Ukraine became a member of NATO, that would put U.S. and NATO troops directly on the doorstep of Russia, which, as Putin has laid out, would undermine their national security interests. Uh, the reality is that it is highly, highly unlikely that Ukraine will ever become a member of NATO anyway. So the question is, why doesn't President Biden and, and NATO leaders actually just say that yes. and guarantee it? Which, which begs the question of, of why are we in this position then? Uh, if, if the answer to this and preventing this war from happening is, is very clear as day, and, and, and really it just points to one conclusion that I can see, which is they actually want Russia to invade Ukraine. Why would they? Because, number one, it gives the Biden administration a clear excuse to go and levy draconian sanctions, which are a modern-day siege against Russia and the Russian people. And, number two, it cements this Cold War in place. Uh, you know, the, the military-industrial complex is the one that benefits from this. They clearly control the Biden administration, warmongers on both sides in Washington who have been drum drumming up these tensions. If, if they get Russia to invade Ukraine, then, uh, again, it locks in this new Cold War. The military-industrial complex starts to make a ton of more money than, than they have been in fighting uh, al-Qaeda or, or making weapons for al-Qaeda. And who pays the price? The American people pay the price. The Ukrainian people pay, pay the price. The Russian people pay the price. It undermines our own national security, but the military-industrial complex that controls so many of our politicians wins, and they, they run to the bank. You've seen this from both sides as a lawmaker and a member of our armed forces, so I think you've got a credible view on this. I, I just have to ask, they've been telling us with increasing hysteria, Wendy Sherman and Jake Sullivan and the president himself, that the threat here is to Western Europe, that Vladimir Putin has, has aims on our allies in Western Europe. Why don't the Europeans seem as afraid as our leaders are, if that's true? I think that is a legitimate question that no one in the Biden administration or the NATO leadership has responded to in any way. Uh, it seems they've forgotten that they are supposed to be accountable to the American people, that they answer to the American people. And yet they, they have failed to answer this very, very simple question in justifying why we are continuing to send more troops uh, to Europe, why they are continuing to escalate tensions, why they are continuing to push for something and in, in uh, you know, making Ukraine a member of NATO that, again, is highly unlikely to ever happen. And if it did happen, it would undermine our own national security and our own right. country's interests. I, I, there doesn't seem an upside. I mean, no one has been able to explain why Americans should want Ukraine to join NATO. Is there something that we're missing here? Is there some benefit to the United States from having that happen? I've looked at this carefully, Tucker, and I have yet to find any benefit that a, a political leader has used or could use to justify this to the American people. All you hear is like, well, we have to defend democracy. We have to defend this democratic country of Ukraine. But as you know very well, uh, this current president, you know, shuts down, polit arrests political opposition, throws them in yep. jail, shuts down TV stations that are critical to him. Uh, I, I have a hard time seeing how President Biden or anyone can say with an honest face, we are defending democracy. And the reason is because our own government has publicly supported these authoritarian actions by the Ukrainian president in shutting down their own political opposition. And it begs the question, uh, this sounds familiar to some of the things that unfortunately we're seeing play out right here at home. I was, about, I was just about to say, it sounds like their kind of democracy. Tulsi Gabbard, I, th that's about the smartest analysis I've heard. And I really appreciate you laying it out for us. Thank you.